sector here. We'll jump in the private one here about halfway through the hour. Um, but today's topic is actually one that was submitted by one of our career agents. Uh, so we're going to go a little board activity and then go around the room a little bit too. Uh, we're joined by Victoria, Brad, uh, Stephen, and Frank, and myself, Jacob, here uh, today to go over this agent submission, which is what are the go-to tools to see how to identify the best plan? Okay, so this is very agent specific, uh, you know, for everybody here. You know, if you are a person on Medicare or becoming on Medicare, you know, this is more directed towards how the agents make that correct sure, recommendation yeah, for you. Uh, okay. All right, I'll just continue there, Buckley. Okay, good to go. He's got two sound things up there. That's why he's up there twice. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Still nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna kick him out. Right. Sorry, I wrecked his ignore him. Okay, so we we'll can all right. So take two here. All right, we'll we'll just cut that last portion. So we got asked about. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll do it live. All right. So we got um, asked about. You know, what are your go tos? How do you identify the best plans? When it comes to drug plans, doctors, underwriting, symptoms, carriers. So we're going to go to the board here. And we're just going to go over a few. And I'm going to kind of ask these guys, too, um, if they agree with what I say, first and foremost, if we're all on the same track or kind of what they look for. So let me pop up here. All right. So go to's here. Number one for prescription drug plans. Stephen Grip, what is the very first thing you need when you have to look at a prescription drug plan? Uh. What's the only thing you need? MBI. Well, if that's, if that's what we're looking at, a plan, yes. Their MBI number, yes. Oh. Drugs. We need prescriptions. We need okay. prescriptions. Thank you. You're, okay, you're picking I was up on that. Drugs. That, yes. Okay. Next up, pharmacy. And really, do we need anything else? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. Ah, no say MBI. Yes, no MBI. So, what else do we need, Frank? You also, as a clarification of pharmacy, want to double check and see if they're okay or if they prefer mail order forms. Okay, so mail option. What I'm also going to include in here is a. I'm going to do a little start. Low premium versus a high premium, just for just for difference here. So, obviously. You got to know what drugs they're taking. You got to know what pharmacy that you're looking at here too, okay? Because it does depend if you are dealing with somebody who's very rural and they like to use the pharmacist that paid for their kids' T-balls team jerseys for 15 years and now they're paying for the grandkids' jerseys, you know, that's A-OK. -okay. This you have to know because if they are using that pharmacy, it's not going to be the price that Walgreens has or CVS has. It's not. You know, where I've seen it before where pharmacies only will take an AERP drug plan that's $120 a month. They won't use any other one. That's the only one that they'll use, the only one that they'll file through that's in network here. So drugs, when we mean drugs, what does that mean, Victoria? What do we need? The name, the dosage, and the frequency. Okay, so name, if everybody heard that, it's a little too, we got a lot here, but name, dosage, frequency, pharmacy here. All right, now, Brad Jenkins here, even when you're on Medicare.gov, when you put in name, frequency, dosage, and what pharmacy they want to use, what pops up for you? Well, you know, you, you want to make sure it's, whether it's brand name or generic. Okay, first of and all, back to the drugs. drugs. So once you put in the drugs, once you put in the pharmacy and you click run on Medicare.gov or any other drug program, it pulls up all the companies and what is recommended. The first one that the pulls up. The very first one. Why is that, Frank? Because it's the lowest annual overall cost. Correct. So annually. when we look at these, and this is your go-to here, what you want to look at is the premium plus the cost. About every website, doesn't matter if you're going on Medicare.gov, if they're doing it themselves, this is the first number that's going to pop up. So if it is a $5 a month premium, so 60 bucks and their drug cost is 40, it's gonna come out to 100, okay? 
that's going to be the very the first one that's on there. If we go down the list, you know, we go to five or six, and we're talking about a mutual of Omaha, it might be, you know, seven hundred dollars or so annualized. So premium and how much the drug cost here? Well, if they can get it for a hundred, why are you even going down the list to seven hundred? This is not helping them. This is hurting them here. Now there are particular situations, okay? to where we will have a, uh, this is why I had this here, a little combination where we can see is what's the difference between a low premium versus a high premium drug plan, okay? All right, Stephen, let me ask on you here. You have somebody who takes Eloquus once a month here, okay? okay. What's really going to be the difference for them between a low premium drug plan and a high premium drug plan? The cost of Eloquus. The cost of the drug, exactly. So right. it comes back to here, right there, where if you look at, there are well care plans that are $10 a month, okay? They come along with a $505 deductible. Usually your first month's payment is that whole entire deductible if you're filling it monthly. Then when you get to February, it's about between, let's say about $40, $70 or so until you hit the donut hole, which is about June, then it jumps back up to about $150, okay? That's with a $5, $10 plan. Whereas you can look at something else that might be 60 or $70 here with SilverScript that has no premium and you just pay $45 every month. Now, you know, it's kind of a pick your poison. Yeah, it has, it has no deductible, nothing like that. You have immediate coverage right away. So you don't have to hit that 500. That is something that is very important that you need to do in your discovery about how people want it to operate. You know, I had a guy one time describe it to me because, you know, we're here in Texas he goes, you know, considering the hot months and considering the cold months, would you rather pay a flat rate for your air conditioning bill or pay $500 in the summer and $100 in the winter for it? You know, would you like to meet in the middle? So when you're not using it, you're still paying for it. It's about $300 a month, but there's no variance. Okay. That's what your higher premium is. So if people, they hate being, you know, that deductible they have to hit where the first month is $500 plus, then after that, it jumps down. If your people don't like that, then you go to the higher one and say, look, there's no deductible. Now you got to pay more per month, but over time it's more stable. Okay. So in combination for here for drug plan, you know, you need your dosage, your frequency, what pharmacy they want to use, whether we're doing mail order or retail, but this is really where you are going to meet your match here. Cause if you got any, anybody that's just on generics, it's going to be a hundred bucks a year. That's what it is. It's going to be virtually free for it. They don't need the $70 one. When this comes up here, that is what you have to bring up when we have drugs like Eliquis. You have to ask them, which would they rather do? The lower premium, but pay more when they go to the, uh, when they go to the pharmacist, or a higher premium, but be more consistent and not be surprised by it. So that is it for drug plans there. Now we're going to move on to the next one here. And this is before, kind of, go you, ahead, Stephen. I'm sorry. Before you do... You mentioned it in the presentation, everything I totally agree with. Mm -hmm. But can you explain just very briefly how the drug deductible works? Because a lot of clients ask and mm -hmm. they get confused as how that is applicable to their cost mm -hmm. or their plan. Right. So a deductible is always a deductible no matter what industry you're in. That is the amount you have to come out of pocket before the plan even activates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, per plan, it does depend. There are some that have tier one, tier two. That's that what I want you to talk about. Go towards the duck. I mean, we're getting very specific. They will say it. that those are exempted. And in case, in case people don't know this, if on that plan that drug is already free, then there's no need. It's free. There's no cost included mm -hmm. in it anyway. Exactly. So, but the, the, that's a general insurance terminology, which is deductible is a deductible. Plan mm -hmm. doesn't start until X condition met. Correct. So. Or coverage in this case here. The, right. the coverage. The coverage agreed plan. upon cost of your drugs does not start until you've paid yeah. X amount of money. It's the, the easiest way to account for it and explain it to a client is always going to be a matter of um, everyone has car insurance. Mm -hmm. Car insurance typically has anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollar deductible depending on the state you're in. I gotta pay that five if I have a bumper dent and that's gonna be three hundred dollars, mm -hmm. my insurance company's not gonna pay a dot. And I a, have to pay and the three hundred dollars. Guess what? You don't want to. You don't want that deductible. What do you have to pay? Higher, higher premium, premium. There or you go. higher copay. Yep. Um, so, but generally speaking, the easiest thing in the world to do for people mm -hmm. is use the annualized cost. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want a deductible. Great, it's going to cost you an extra thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Oh, because it's the annual that annualized cost is annualized total mm -hmm. cost. That is yep. premium deductibles, copays, everything bundled mm -hmm. together. Now, <clears> what, what Frank brought up, and it was a really good quick point. That's what we'll say here before we move on. Um, if they can't comprehend it or if they do have a question, reference something else that works the exact same way. Auto insurance here. You know, do you want to pay 10 bucks a month, but your deductible is a thousand dollars if you get in a fender bender, or would you rather pay $70 and it's zero? You know, make that comparison there. So, so recap. So recap here. Drugs, what do you need? Dosage, frequency, pharmacy. After that, once you plug everything in, no matter what system you're using, more than likely the very first thing that pops up is going to be the lowest annualized cost for premium and drug costs. That's what you recommend. Okay. So even there are some times where we have people that are on Eloquist that have a $500 deductible. Well, guess what? Their annualized premium is about seven, $800 less yes. just because they have the deductible. So no matter what, if you're in a pinch, if you don't know what to recommend, whatever is number one or number two on the list, that's it. There's no reason to go further down the list because everything else is just going to be more money and more money and more money. So once you run it, the very first thing, that's more likely going to be it there. So I have one disclaimer here. Oh, Got to be quick. If the pharmaceutical company raises the price of the medication midstream, they will change that. So where you do have a deductible. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's, okay. That's, 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 that's a whole not, different. Okay, yeah. all right, all right, that is nope. a very rare occurrence yeah, because yeah, these guys that negotiate their prices know, yeah. into the last year. Yeah, yeah we're talking yeah, about something else. Here. All, right, guys, all right, I got this. Guys, guys, I got this, guys. Calls. All right, so next point here was uh, doctors here. Okay, your go to tools really with the programs that you're using when you are, you know, only looking at doctors for advantage plans here. Number one, you want to look into the program where you're able to access that information. Um, so whether it's within our CRM here too, um, you know, you plug the doctors right in, they'll tell you who's in or out of network. If you ever do struggle with it, you can just go to the doctor search. It's that simple. You know, doctor search is only one. It's very specific towards advantage plans here. If it's not in the CRM system, just type in well cared network and it'll say Medicare HMO PPO type in the zip code, type in the name. Okay. It, they have to say it on there. And if you really are lost, call the office. They will tell you. Just look them up, call them. You're good to go here. Okay. So next question here was about medical symptoms. This one is really if you're making a quick look for it. The quickest way that you can have an idea here are these different conditions. Okay. Number one. Diabetes, okay? Number two, heart issues. And I'll move out of the way here in a second. Number three, cancer. Uh, number four, respiratory. And Brad, I'm missing one. What am I I'm missing here? I always say diabetes, uh, diabetes, uh, heart, cancer, kidney. That's what it is. Okay. So when we talk about people's symptoms here. All right, it's a little hard to see. Marker's kind of going out. But we have diabetes. We have heart issues, we have cancer, we have respiratory issues, we have kidney. These are your major players in underwriting. Okay, this is what you need to know firsthand. This will kind of give you an idea. Not only will the prescriptions be your blueprint, this is going to be really it here. Okay, so if we answer no to all this, I know from the get-go, hey, we got a pretty good shot. Okay, but if they say, yeah, I've had some, I've had some heart issues here. Okay, well, we need to figure out what that is, when that is, why that is. You have to dive in here, okay? So as long as this is your starting point, diabetes, heart issues, cancer, respiratory, kidney, this will give you your overall idea here, okay? Now, how do you rope this into carriers as well? Now, this is something that over time you are going to learn yourself, but more importantly, you have to learn it as you go. You know, we can give you everything here, every underwritten company, how they work, but at the end of the day, if you don't learn it, you're just going to fall back on it all, all the time. You're going to make mistakes. You know, we still ask each other underwriting questions every day here. But when we talk about carriers, this is where you have to know. All of this here has to be stable. So nothing recent, no recent heart surgery, no recent cancer treatment. You know, really any time kidney diagnosis is a majority. Now there are some companies throwing in level three and below. But 
really, you want to look for timetables here. So uh, diabetes, normally it's a two year for stability, but if you have any of these other things, guess what? You're done. You're out. It's, it's too much complications until you reach a certain point, And that's for another discussion here. Heart issues, what you have to learn for these guys here, really mainly I'd say about these, these three here or four is timelines. So baseline, two years here. You had a stent placed, great. Two years from now, you're gonna be okay once you show that you have the stability. Cancer, had a little melanoma on your arm here removed, perfect, you know, not a big deal. Two years. Same thing with a lot of respiratories here. You know, in the past two years, you've been diagnosed with COPD or asthma. Okay, they gave you one inhaler, no nebulizer, and it's just seasonal allergies, you know, cool. Okay, after two years, you're good. That's your standard baseline. Frank, quick. What qualifies the stability of two years? What, what makes a condition unstable, especially in relation to medication? Great question. Any change. So what that means here, if you are on, let's say Eloquist, since this is what we're doing here, okay? The, we'll use a generic, Warfarin. Okay, just a blood thinner. It's a heck of a lot cheaper. It's a tier one, tier one drug, virtually free, okay? Say Frank here had a stroke and they prescribed him Warfarin, okay? You know, he's about a year, year and a half down the road. And let's say he goes from five milligrams to 10 milligrams. All right, guess what? That whole year and a half that you just had up here, wipe that away. Because it's got to be two years on that same medication, no changes. Now, let's say they take it away. Some companies will be okay with that. They will consider that as an improvement since you're taking away the maintenance medication. But as long as you have changes in medication, any type of treatment, if you have AFib and they had to put in another stent, or you had a pacemaker, or they just replaced the battery on your pacemaker. A lot of this here is we need to be two years removed from the last incident that this popped up on your record. You know, think like the insurance company when it comes to this guy's, would you insure this person if they just had a stent? No. Would you insure this person if they just had cancer treatment? No. Would you insure this person if they had kidney disease and they end up on dialysis and you have to pay every week? Absolutely no. Would you insure them if they're not stable on their medication? No. Right. Because there's too much variance to it. So if you can figure out diabetes, heart, cancer, respiratory, kidney, that is the symptoms that will lead you to carriers. Now, carriers, they do kind of vary by questions. You know, Aetna's cancer is a three-year question. Mutual of Omaha is a two-year. Medico is a two-year. AARP is a two-year. Uh, Philadelphia is a five-year question. And I believe uh, Prosperity Life is a five-year question as well for cancer. Okay. All those questions are very similar to each other with only the change in time frame, but they all run along the lines of in the past two years, have you had treatment or prescribed new medication for cancer? Okay. So that's, that's what you have to figure out. Now with carriers, we'll just touch on this real quick. Then we will uh, sit down and kind of discuss it a little bit. Um, really, there's a few different factors that go into it. Again, guys, it goes into your discovery. Okay. So not only are we looking at, the okay that one's done there there that's a little bit not only are we looking at how much it costs per month but as well too you have to also keep in mind the rating that you're looking at because that that can be important but it's not as important and then the how hard is it to do the application okay a lot of people forget that a lot of, some of these apps they only have email signatures have you all ever tried to do an email signature with somebody in their late 80s Okay. It's hard as hell. You might as well just take a flight or drive to their house and help them do it there. Cause you're going to get a hard time doing it versus we can do a mutual of Omaha. We talked about this morning, me and Brad did where it's a phone signature where that takes two minutes and you're done. They don't got to open anything. They don't have to sign anything. Nothing like that. Or Manhattan or Etna, that gives that the security question or, or security question answer as well too. So you have to think about that as well. Okay how good a technology is this person, but resort back to the plans that you know how their enrollments work. You know, same thing with rating and cost as well. You find that out in your discovery questions because you ask, you know, are you looking for a bigger name company that might be a little bit more per month? Or are you looking for something that is going to be more stable over time? You know, everything that you're finding out in that page four, page five here, that's all going to come into play here. You're going to know, are they stuck to a name? 
do they just love ride or die AERP? It's the only thing they want, even if Edna's $50 less. You know, are they really that worried about what they look like on paper for their rating? A lot of companies who work with their A rated. A lot of people don't care about this. Okay, I know you can't see it, but it says rating right here. It doesn't pop up too often. It does get brought up, but that's not really what makes the decision here. It's how you present the company itself. So take all that into consideration. Now we will sit down and uh, kind of chat a little bit. I want to ask Brad here too. Uh, you know, besides, besides underwriting, how do you yourself, how do you p pick out a carrier that you want to make your go-to carrier? Well, first you have to determine uh, the client. Do they have an email address? Are they just concerned with premium? Do they like, you know, have a allegiance with a certain company? And of course, you know, the underwriting th takes a factor there, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> you want to be able to get this thing done smoothly without them getting too aggravated and, and easy. You know, medical questions, it, are they gonna go through a Spanish inquisition or is it gonna be a few questions that make it easy? Um, you know, of course we always look at the lowest premium, you know, we wanna save them as much money as possible, but that may not be the best solution for them. And it's a conversation with the client, select our questions, you know, what's important to them. You want a company that's gonna be, has not business for a long time, top rated company, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, one thing too, to kind of piggyback off that for this discussion is what you have to keep in mind is some of these companies are doing phone health interviews after the application. If you have somebody on the phone who can't walk a straight line and they just go on and on about their conditions and just pour more and more out, what do you think the underwriter is going to get from them? That's going to be where it should be a 10, 15 minute phone call. It's going to be 45 mm -hmm. minutes and they're going to tell them every single ailment, every time they bought band-aids, everything like that. From and then the, the underwriter is going to go no context of it and say, well, because we all have had this where someone had a heart attack 20 years ago and they're denying because they said yes to the heart attack question on underwriting. That was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I think one of the things that I always look at, because by the time I do selector questions, they're not for me to select a mm -hmm. client. I already know what I'm going to get them. By the time I got their medications and their generalized health history, I know what I'm going to put them with because I want to put them with someone that has made it easy for me to enroll them. Because if they make my life easy, they're going to make my client's life easy. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to get it issued business, not just put in apps. Absolutely. You know, and with the uh, advent of Milliman now, most companies use computerized underwriting where really underwriter doesn't even call them. So in a person of that situation where they, you know, can't put two words together, you want to give that a shot first where mm -hmm. it's going to go to Milliman, hopefully just get issued look, look at this. and done deal. I'm really good at field underwriting. And since I'm good at field underwriting, I know what medical conditions are. Like I know what ALS is. I know what the actual progression of MS mm. is. I know what heart attacks and stints do because you need to learn that stuff. You need to learn why an insurance company is flighty about this because you need to learn the long-term cost and deg uh, degradation mm -hmm. of a person. Mm -hmm. And that's what they look at. It's so, at oh, sorry, go ahead. so what ends up happening is, is that once you learn that, then you go, okay, since I'm good at my job and I'm confident in what I'm doing, I keep on submitting businesses carrier and they keep on denying it. So I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to go on to someone else who's going to go and cover my clients because people don't, people don't realize this and they forget it. Putting a client, when you put clients into a position where they're constantly denied, you're hurting them, right? You're hurting yourself. And you, that's why you don't look at commission. Oh, well, this guy pays like 15% more. So I'm going to put them on. Yeah, well, they're paying 15% more because they can't issue business because their underwriting department's jacked. And they're trying to figure out a way to bribe agents to do it. Well, I would rather have 15% less and get three policies in a day than no policies at all mm -hmm. and have to do three times the work and lose all those clients because they're not going to do two, three apps with me. Mm -hmm. And here's your, here, here's your story for the day too, guys, about you know really the enrollment process and selecting all these. You got to go through one of each. Okay, you got to try everybody. That's the thing. If you're just stuck with that and that's all you want to do, you know, that's fine but you really need to broaden your horizons. You know, there was a new company that came out this year, um, not going to say the name, but really lowest thing out there for like three or four months. Insane underwriting questions where you basically had to never have gone to a doctor's office to get approved. But that also kind of tells us, okay, they might actually be pretty stable with their questions, but we don't know, okay? 
So I did like two or three, right? I had this lady that I wrote in October for a November 1st effective date. Uh, day before November 1st came, it was like, hey, we got to move it to December. Like, okay, yeah, or it's in our underwriting department. We'll get to it. December 1st came, still at no decision. So we moved it to January 1st. This is now the second time here. By the, after Christmas, I called. And every time I called for an update here, because I was pissed off at him, it took me 30 minutes to get a person on the line. And you know what they told me when they finally talked to me that last week in December? And they go, oh, yeah, this is declined, by the way. You know, screw them. I'm done with them. They're, you're never getting another application from me for not only what you put me through as a commissioned licensed agent, but what you put that policyholder through, having to move the premium or the effective date twice, going through all this rigmarole, spending all this time here, just because you cannot get your underwriting team together. So here's the question on that. You mm -hmm. think? One would think that strict underwriting questions or strict underwriting is actually a recipe for low premium, but it's not because premiums are not just based off of underwriting or the health of the people in there. Mm -hmm. It's also the law of large numbers. How many people are sharing that risk? And if I'm not growing a risk pool or if it's not a big risk pool because I have an incompetent underwriting or technology department, then I don't have enough people to spread that risk around. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter mm -hmm. how good I am and, and how strict I've been. So that's the balancing act in there. So as agents, we need to go ahead and know about that. We need to look at it. A good example, right? This company, most people never hear about until they get into Medicare. Mm -hmm. right? And I'll go ahead and say their name. It's Manhattan. Manhattan has decently strict underwriting questions. They're kind of tagged to the old school, like, you know, five years for some things, two years for another. But it's just boilerplate general underwriting questions, stuff that Mutual of Omaha had made years ago, right? They didn't try to get creative. They didn't let their actuaries go insane or let accounts run it. However, their underwriting is very efficient and quick, and their e-app is incredibly easy, mm -hmm. right? So they started getting a lot of people in those markets into that system. So that more than compensated for it. And how many years was Manhattan incredibly stable on their premium? Rock solid. Might be a few dollars more for 65-year-olds, but guess what? They weren't having big 20% rate increases. Now, Let's go to another one because this is a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Let's go to one where I was here when a big national insurance carrier based out of San Francisco. That's as much as I'll go on it. Mm -hmm. I know it. Big building, big, right? Big building. Iconic <laughs> for the skyline. Right? Botch their enrollment. Mm -hmm. The questions weren't that bad, right? But botch their enrollment and their underwriting process to where they made it hard for agents to enroll. Declined everything. Declined everything. And in fact, did such a bad job that well, it's stuff that they did issue on open enrollment. They said, oh, you got to go back and get them to sign a form now saying that we'll, we're going to exempt them for six months under this. And we immediately canceled like 50 policies that month. We're like, not doing that. But you know what? They stayed stable because they sacrificed their profit for a while. But guess what happened to their premium? Straight up as soon as they, it's untenable because they didn't get the amount of people on it. Mm -hmm. So you got to look at that stuff. You have to look at the ease of use for yourself because that does, like you just ran into, reflect how easy it will be for your customer. Because there might be one time where they want to call and just ask a question, a question, giving them money and they put you on hold for 45 minutes. What are they going to do to a guy that goes, hey, I just had a quick question. Um, what was this rate increase about? Or I had a, it looks like my doctor might have built something wrong. How do I take care of that? Mm -hmm. Oh, three hours on the phone for them? You're going to have a happy client? And you know the funny funniest thing is when we when I found out she was declining, <coughs> I called her the next day and we applied with Medico, who has one of the instant underwritings like Brad over here was talking about. Uh, she got approved and we put in for February first. And I go, well, it's in it's in a week. Let's just make it January first. Mm -hmm. Okay, called Medico. They answered in two minutes, and the lady was like, "Hey guys, how can I help you?" And I was like, "Hey, we just applied and we found out that she's mm -hmm. issued. Can we move it to January first here?" Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Let me get some stuff done. And yeah, from there, she was like, way, who she was also, like, I love that company. Right. That's a great company. And the other way, one is who, sketchy. Who also has stable rates? Medico does too. Right. Because people sign up with them. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. If you want to be able to have a stable business, you better go ahead and be able to get customers. And that means you can't make it hard for your sales force, i.e. agents, to enroll business. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk about uh, people calling insurance companies. Not everybody agrees with this, but I always tell them, call me. In lieu of calling insurance companies, they're going to hit the wrong prompts, and that's exactly what's going to happen. They'll mm -hmm. talk to somebody in a different department. They'll get the wrong answers. They'll get bounced around. They get angry, mm -hmm. and then they call me. So always 
tell them, call you, you know, in lieu of the insurance company, you can handle things quickly. We know all the problems if we have to get a hold of the insurance company, but mm -hmm. um, that's a very good point. You know, um, everybody I know of that's had issues that calls insurance company, even the good ones, mm -hmm. they call me, they're all, yeah, I talked to so-and-so, they had me on hold, I got bounced around, I got the wrong answer. Avoid it. Mm -hmm. So to, <clears throat> to wrap up here before we head to our uh, Zoom meeting here with our Guru's Career Agents, uh, just to go back over everything here that was on the board, uh, drug plans for go-tos, dosages, frequency, pharmacy, and then more than likely, whatever you're using, it's going to pop up. Whatever the first one is, pick it. You forgot one component. Go What's that? Or Medicare.gov too. You know, just it's whatever site you use, if you're enrolling them yourself, if you're doing it on Medicare.gov, whatever pops up first, more than likely it's going to be it. Okay. Um, doctor's choice, you know, it's in your programs where you look for advantage plans. It's on Medicare.gov. If it looks like Humana is the only one you're looking at, just look up Humana Provider Search. <coughs> And under Medicare, we'll say HMO, PPO, you'll be good there. Uh, symptoms, going back to it here, go-tos to look into, diabetes, heart attack, cancer, kidney, anything respiratory. And then when looking into carriers, not only the premium, the carrier's reputation, or reputation, how they've treated you in the past, and then how hard is their enrollment process. The easier, the better, the more applications they're going to get because they're not putting you through anything. Uh, so that is it for our dojo here. We're going to hop over to the Zoom meeting here. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Brad. Again, this is Jacob Crotty here uh, this afternoon. Uh, be good. And if you can't be good, be safe.